today we're going to talk a little bit about using rib cartilage for rhinoplasty. It seems like it's a question that patients ask a lot. When patients come to our office frequently, they're in a situation where they need a rib cartilage graft to do their rhinoplasty. That's patients who've had previous surgery, patients who want major augmentation of their nasal dorsum, situations where you need a lot of cartilage. Why do we use rib cartilage? A couple really important reasons. Number one is the cartilage that's on the inside of your nose, you may not have enough. Secondarily, ear cartilage is very soft. When we touch your ear, you can feel it's very soft. When you touch your chest wall, it's very stiff, rigid, and strong. When we do these more complex reconstructive type of cases, we want cartilage which is strong, that's going to last the patient's lifetime, and is very reliable. And that's what I have found rib cartilage to be. Now, a lot of people don't like rib cartilage. A lot of patients don't like it. A lot of surgeons don't like it. The disadvantages are, number one, it makes your nose stiff. That's probably one of the biggest problems. And the other issue is rib cartilage could bend or warp, meaning deform. That happens, but it's relatively infrequent, maybe less than 5% of cases when you look at it across the board. But the big advantage with the rib is it allows us to make significant changes in the structure of the nose, improve the nasal function, and give the patient a nice long-term outcome. The long-term outcome is really what we're looking for. A lot of the patients that come in have had two or three previous surgeries with ear cartilage. They have it done every couple years. Their nose pinches, the nostril margins come up, their breathing goes bad. We want to stop the cycle. We want to do a surgery and have it be the last surgery. Now, what are the possible complications? Well, you can have a collapsed lung. It's very rare. I really never have had that complication. You can have the warping, as I mentioned, which again is relatively unlikely. You do have pain post-op, but we use a long-acting local anesthetic that we inject between the ribs, and it lasts for about 72 hours. So it gives you almost three days of pain reduction, which really helps a lot because by the time you hit the third day, the pain in your rib cage is, is relatively low and it can be handled very easily with an extra strength Tylenol. So the other issue with rib is, is that you will have a scar. Most of us make larger scars, four centimeters. It can be very unsightly. What we'll try to do is do one of two things. We'll either hide the scar in the crease below the breast, or we're gonna make a smaller scar. In a male patient, we want that incision to be less than two centimeters, preferably 1.2 to 1.3 centimeters. That's less than an inch. If we can keep that incision small and camouflage it well, it's really not gonna be an issue for you. So in the long run, you've had a good reconstruction with a long lasting material which came from you, not from someone else. It's not artificial. It's your own tissue. And the key is a long-lasting aesthetic and functional outcome. That's really what we're trying to achieve. And that's why I use RIB.